Hello, hello. So I have changed my mind around plant medicine. Ah, ah. Welcome to Sobriety Bestie. I am a bit nervous to make this video. Um, it might trigger some people. It might, it feels, <sighs> feels like I'm going to be really honest with you and just share with you exactly where I'm at right now in my journey and what I believe about plant medicine. And I have changed my mind around plant medicine. My initial view on plant medicine is that, um, well, I actually called it drugs back in the day. Like when I took mushrooms my first time um, in the 1990s, I was curious. I thought it would be fun. I was curious about um, my mind, expanding my mind. So there was a bit of it, a curious about consciousness, although I wouldn't have called it that at the time. This was, I believe it was 1992. So this is like 30 years ago. This is before I was ever on the internet, long before I was on the, ever on the internet. This is before social media. This is before Google was invented. So I was curious about expanding the mind and there wasn't any online form or anything. There's obviously no YouTube. And so, yeah, I was curious. I was also scared. And I have a video up here about that experience, My, uh, which was to this date, it's the most profound spiritual experience I've ever had, was that first time I ate mushrooms um, 30 years ago. So you can watch that video um, if you want. My first attitude towards it was drugs are um, a normal part of um, coming of age and finding out who you are and uh, finding out what the mind is about, what the heart and spirit's about. Um, and I was curious, you know, 16 years old, I was a kid and that's what I did. This is just like what happened. Uh, I actually stopped using uh, anything that I think generally we'd consider a drug in the 90s. So in 1999 is the last time I took something that we'd all consider a drug. I quit using drugs August 1999. Um, I didn't quit drinking alcohol until September 2009. So there were still 10 more years I had of drinking alcohol. I did use benzos. If you've seen my benzo playlist up here, I had a journey with benzos, but I took them as prescribed in the 2000s. So I don't count that as taking a drug, right? But when I got to rehab in September 2009, um, this is kind of weird, but I always had this vision of like one day I'd be like in my 60s or 70s and I'd be on the beach somewhere with my partner, with my husband and we'd take ecstasy and it would be really funny and fun and connected. I just kind of had a vision that one day I would, you know, take MDMA with my partner. When I went to rehab in September 2009, they indoctrinated me into the ideology of um, abstinence. All drugs are bad and MDMA is certainly a drug and it is certainly bad. Psilocybin mushrooms are a drug. They are bad. They are wrong. That's a relapse. I was indoctrinated into that ideology. And I do use that language because that wasn't my opinion. That wasn't my belief system. My belief system was that, and I'm so grateful that I have that experience of being on mushrooms the first time. I'm not going to go into that story. Like I have that whole video on it, but it was the most profound experience spiritually that I've had to date the date of me making this video for you that I've ever had. I literally left my body. I went somewhere else. We didn't know how many to eat. We ate them all and it was a lot. And I just like, I went, I didn't, I was beyond self. I was beyond ego. I didn't know I was a human anymore. I didn't know I was, you know, a human with a name. Like I remember when I, when I was like, oh my God, my name's Kirsten. It was like this huge epiphany. Like, oh, I'm actually a human. You know, I was like, like in the cosmos, my consciousness was in the cosmos and it taught me so much about life and what's actually happening here. I'm getting the craziest chills, like that we're souls inside bodies, that this is temporary, like don't sweat the small stuff basically, like we're here, souls on a mission. Um, and so I got all this information from that first experience. So was that a drug or was that a medicine? It's the, I'm telling you today that it's the most profound spiritual experience I've ever had. So was that a medicine? Was that, you know, or was that a drug? And so that's up to debate, right? Like we can look at who, who's, who's answering the question. Is it uh, the people in the plant medicine community answering the question? Is it the DEA of America answering the question? Because psilocybin mushrooms is classified as a schedule one drug. That means it's, you know, potentially highly addictive and highly dangerous where something like benzos are schedule four drug, which is probably not addictive, basically is the, the language there, which is fucking bullshit. Okay, can I swear? Can I swear? Look, my experience with mushrooms is like my mind was blown, my soul escaped, and I had this like this divine experience. There's no way I'm going to do that every day. 
that was wild. It took me six months to like integrate that. I didn't know I was integrating it because I didn't know anybody else who had ever been to wherever I was and to like reacclimate to the world and be like, wow, okay, I'm a soul inside of a body, but I, I'm still currently in a body, right? No way that I could have done that as like the schedule one drug thing. Like, I'm like, what is that about, right? Like not trying to hate on the DEA, but do you sure? Are you sure it's highly addictive? Because <laughs> actually benzos were like, I got dependent upon benzos taking them as prescribed. And why is that a schedule four? It's interesting. And so that's why I use the, the terminology indoctrinated. Because if I think for myself, I have a new understanding of what I think about this stuff, which is closer to my original understanding about what I think about this stuff. Then um, I was told and indoctrinated in rehab in September 2009 that this dream that you have about taking ecstasy on the beach with your partner when you're later in life, like that's not going to happen. That's called a relapse. That's a drug. Drugs are bad. That's a relapse. You need to be sober forever. And I believe that I, um, you know, I was scared. I almost died um, from alcohol, essentially alcohol and fear and benzos. Like I, my, my felt like my spirit was about to leave my body in September, 2009. And that I was so scared that I was about to die that that's when I got sober. Right. I don't take this lightly, you know, because addiction, addiction's hardcore. Like I almost lost my life to it. Right. And so I, I, you know, when I got sober, I went to Alcoholics Anonymous. I did 30 days in rehab and then I went to AA I'm trying to do all my own thinking, like check science, look into science, look into my spirit and my heart. Like, like, who the fuck am I and why am I here? You know, that's what is most relevant and important to me. Not what somebody else decided was like the rules of how things go, but to take like an honest and educated look at like what, what's going on? What is this stuff? What are these substances? And what is my life about? And what do I want to do here? What do I want to explore here? Now, at the time of making this videos, I still haven't done mushrooms or anything like that since the 1990s. I'm open to it. I'm scared shitless of taking mushrooms because of what happened before. It was scary. You know, it is scary to like face your immortality, to have your soul leave your body. It was scary. It was also beautiful. It was really, really powerful. Like I'm not against it. I do think it's when I look at it in hindsight, I'm like, I do see the medicine there, the power there, like what actually happened. My intention when I was using them, I didn't have an intention. It was just to have fun and explore. It was like lighthearted. It was, um, to use it recreationally, but it wasn't a recreational experience. That's not what happened. <laughs> no, I know that if you microdose or you take a smaller dose, you might not actually like go meet God, <laughs> basically go like float in the cosmos like I did. Um, <laughs> so now my view on plant medicine is that there are some plants that are want, that are totally medicinal, that are here to expand our consciousness and to, to remind us of who we are and why we're here or to, to point us to that direction and that are to expand our minds, to expand our souls that are actually healing it really actually healed me and helped me and helped me with a lot of fear. Like it was really, really powerful. So is that a drug? Is that a medicine? Is that a soul expander? Or is that a class one uh, narcotic? You know, I think those are questions that like, for sure, we should look at what the law is where we live. You know, there are certain substances that are against the law. I'm not recommending breaking the law. You know, I'm not recommending um, being righteous about anything. Our time here is limited. And I think that we need to trust our intuition. And if our intuition is saying that, like, uh, that to uh, curious about a substance and to be and to use it for healing purposes, I think that that's something that, like, you can answer for yourself. And my answer for myself, my new attitude, I've changed my mind around plant medicine, and my new attitude is that there are plants that are medicinal, and that it's okay to use them for medicinal purposes, and that I'm willing to use them for medicinal purposes if I feel called. I do not feel called at this time to use psilocybin mushrooms or magic mushrooms. But if I do feel called to expand my, my understanding of the world, my soul, um, what's going on here through psilocybin mushrooms, then I will probably start praying for the courage to go on one of those adventures and one of those psychedelic trips. And now would I consider myself having relapse doing that? Like, no, I do not consider that a relapse. I consider that soul expansiveness. So now let me get into like context, right? Like we hear about set and setting when we use these different in the plant medicine community context. If the context that I'm going to be using as substances to, for fun, to escape my problems, escape my life, escapism, to numb my emotions or to take the edge off, to check out. To me, I define that as a recreational drug. I'm using it to escape from my life. 
because life is too much. My problems are too much. Something is hard. I don't want to feel what I'm feeling and I want to escape. And there is no judgment. I'm making zero judgment on escapism. I have certainly escaped a lot of six years that I've been living. I've, I've, I've gone to alcohol. I've gone to things that I, I've used to escape my life or for fun or to change how I feel. I didn't know how to feel. I didn't know that learning how to feel was like a solution. I didn't know about trauma. I didn't know about healing trauma and that I'd feel more comfortable in my skin if I processed some of this pain that I had buried, you know, in my, in my body, in my tissues, in my cell, in my fascia. Checking out is how I define drugs now. How do you define drugs now? What is used? So when it comes to like something like plant medicine and how I view things now, it's like, what is being used? Like methamphetamine is probably a drug, right? In all cases, <laughs> at all times. Um, what is used is gonna, is gonna play into um, whether or not it's medicinal. What is used, how it's used. Is it used in ceremony? Is it used in community with the, the intention of healing? Why is it used? Why are you using the, the, the plant medicine? Why are you using the substance? So for me, plant medicine today, and this is like a revelation recently in my, the way that I view this, it's checking in. If you're using something to check in, in a ritual or ceremony kind of a way, it's something to check in with you and who you are and what's really going on here. To me, that's medicinal. That would be like um, soul expansion, healing, deconditioning, deprogramming. We've all been conditioned, right? Some of that is trauma. We've been through events that could be traumatic. So if you're resolving trauma, connecting with spirit and soul. I also think it's quite fucking arrogant <laughs> of like someone like me from America to judge something from South America like ayahuasca as a drug and therefore bad and wrong to not even like understand the cultural and the context in which it is used. Who am I to judge it? Like really, who am I to judge it? And I used to, maybe like four or five years ago, I judged the people who were calling these things plant medicine as drug users in denial. Like, what the hell is that? Now I can see that I was really judgmental. I was indoctrinated into an ideology about abstinism, abstinence, you know, that this like purity thinking that like you have to use nothing at all in order to be sober and this sober thing is good. And don't be bad and don't break your sobriety using these substances. <laughs> I'm like getting heated over here. You know, it is actually, I'm in the tropics right now. It is actually heating up over here too. Is caffeine a drug? Is cigarettes and vaping a drug? Is chocolate a drug? Calming teas, are they drug? Are supplements drugs? Are they medicines? Are they breaking relapse? We have to come to these decisions for ourselves. And maybe we even need, especially if we're in early sobriety, we need to have the guidance of somebody who we trust and vibe with. Is it safe for me to use this substance? And in what context and why am I using it? Am I escaping reality because reality is too tough, which I totally get and totally have done? Or am I curious about expanding my consciousness? In fact, I'm like legit drinking a coffee while I'm making this video. Am I currently on drugs? What's drug? And so in the context of sobriety and being somebody specifically who like, you know, almost lost their life um, to alcohol, I was also on benzos as prescribed, but really it was, I was drinking myself to death because I didn't know, I didn't know how to be, be with all um, in my body. I didn't know how to be, I was uncomfortable in my skin. I didn't know how to navigate all the anxiety. I was waking up with panic attacks and alcohol calmed the anxiety, right? I was like, just trying to feel comfortable in my skin. I was taking the edge off, numbing, numbing the F out. That's what I was doing. Now that that's not my experience, I've healed a lot of that trauma. I've learned how to be comfortable in my skin. I'm no longer desperately trying to escape myself. I am currently open to the possibility of doing ayahuasca. Ah! I do not currently feel called. But if I feel called to, to continue my soul's expansion and my soul journey through plant medicine, I'm available for it. I'm up for it. I'm not going to do it tonight. I don't feel called right now to, to do that stuff, but I'm open to it. I no longer see it as a relapse. And if somebody wants to judge me doing ayahuasca, if that's what happens in my future as a relapse, that's their judgment. That's their life. That's their, you know, you're allowed your opinion. You get to do you and you get to judge the world and, and what makes you feel safe and what, what makes sense to you. Trust yourself. That's really, to me, recovery. Recovery is about recovering to our truth, living in our truth, not living by somebody else's conditioning or dog, dogma or um, being, in, you know, Doctrine, being indoctrinated into somebody else's ideology, being possessed by an ideology, 
you know, to me, recovery is about recovering to living in our truth, living as our truth. My encouragement is to continue expanding your soul and to move in the direction of your heart and your spirit. In fact, I define courage as taking action in alignment with our heart and our spirit. And that's what I started doing in the beginning of my sobriety. I was literally, it felt like I was afraid of everything, including leaving the house. And so I made a commitment to myself to courage. And I courageously was like, I gotta take, do all these things that like I feel my heart and my spirit wanna do. I gotta just take that action. I wanna be the person that I feel called to be, like from the inside. I wanna live that life on the outside. And so if plant medicine calls me, I'm going to do it. That's how I live my life. I no longer see it as a relapse. I no longer see it as um, the how I was indoctrinated through the recovery movement, which I'm not hating on. I'm just in a place now at, you know, 13 years sober where I'm looking at life a little bit differently. And I'm looking at like, you know, what do I actually think when I think for myself? What is my soul calling me to do? What is my soul telling me? What does my heart want? And how do I want to live my life? And I'm continually going to be on that courageous journey, right? Like I want to take each action in alignment with my heart and my spirit. That's what life's about to me. What's life about to you? I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments. Uh, now I just have to pray for the courage to post this video. <laughs> yikes, yikes, yikes. As always, I wish you much peace and freedom on your healing journey. The journey of finding out who you are and why you are here. That is all for now. And I will see you in the next video. If you have any videos specifically that you want me to make or any questions that you have that you would like me to put into a video as an answer, drop that in the comment as well and have a beautiful, beautiful day.